Hello everybody, I'm Adam Hassan with Silicon Labs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your XG24 dev board so you can get up and running with development, debugging, and even hacking on it. Um, how we're going to do that is I'm going to show you a really quick proof of concept with our Bluetooth low energy protocol. You'll see here that we have support for a lot of different protocols, including Bluetooth low energy, but also Zigbee, Matter, a few others, um, but we're going to stick with BLE for today. Um, how you need to get started with this is by installing our development platform, which is called Simplicity Studio. This is an IDE that also includes tools like, um, you know, it has built-in Wireshark, so you could do network analysis, you can do debugging with GDB, uh, and you can do all your development um, on the actual board. Uh, to do this, you can just click Explore Studio. You can also go online, you can look up Simplicity Studio, and you can find our download. Now, you do need an account to download our software but this is an account that you can sign up for. You can make an account, get it really quickly. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do uh, the setup on Windows, but it's really straightforward for Mac and Linux. For Windows, I can just click here and I can get the ISO. It's gonna download an ISO. For the Mac, you're gonna get a disk image and for the Linux, um, you'll get a tar archive. Uh, I'm gonna stop this download or uh, rather, we're gonna continue working here. I already have the ISO downloaded and we can just double click that and it should mount. And here you see a setup.exe. Uh, this is how you'll be installing on Windows. So I can double click that. We'll see an executable here. And here you'll see Simplicity Studio 5 starting up. We can accept the terms of agreement and install. Okay, now that Simplicity Studio has finished installing, we can accept the agreements, click done. Uh, we can skip the logon for now. You can also do this with the account that you created to download Simplicity Studio. So we can click update all. Okay, we finished updating. We can hit close, restart the IDE. And once this starts up, we'll get, uh, we'll get going with some development. Okay, now that we've properly installed Simplicity Studio, we wanna connect up our device. Um, you can do that through USB-C uh, through the debug port. And you should see over here, we see the debug adapters. There's this J-Link um, and it refers to the EFR32, which is that dev board that you have. Uh, we can then install by connecting devices. It finds our device, click next. Now, while this is installing, you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date SDK and build tool chains. Uh, you can do this simply by just selecting update whenever you see it. This will make sure that it's as easy as possible for you to get up and running with your dev board. Once that's finished, we can hit OK to restart. Okay, now that we have Simplicity Studio installed, we can go ahead and go here to connect to devices and pick the device that you've connected. Click Start. And we can create a new project. Now, there's a lot of example projects that we provide to you. Uh, here, it's gonna ask you to select an SDK, a tool chain, that kind of thing. We'll let that load. Um, after that, there's gonna be a, a lot of example projects what we're going to do is we're going to choose the SOC Linky. 
and also set up a bootloader that will allow that application to run on our board. Okay, here we have our example project selection. We wanna go ahead and select Bluetooth, uh, get rid of the solution examples so that we can see all of the uh, example Bluetooth projects. And we can scroll down and find the SOC Blinky, uh, which is right here. You'll notice that we also have SOC Empty, which will be useful to look at if you wanna learn a little bit more about how to develop your own things. But for now, we're gonna click this click next. Um, we can link to SDK and finish. Okay, once your project has finished configuring, you can see here we have a readme explaining how to get started with the SOC Blinky. Um, this is a really simple hello world application that you can put on the device and it will show you how you can receive notifications when a button is pressed. It's going to be one of those buttons on the dev board and also to let you turn on and off a light on the device. Um, you can see here a getting started guide. I will walk through this with you. Uh, one thing you need to make sure of is that you have the proper bootloader, right? So you can place the firmware for this device at the beginning of memory on the flash, but it makes more sense to flash on a bootloader. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to project and click new and select the Silicon Labs project wizard. We can continue as we've been doing previously. And here I'll look up SOC bootloader, or rather we'll just look up bootloader. and we can scroll down and select the bootloader for the SOC Bluetooth app loader. Click next, and it's gonna be a really similar process to what we've been doing previously. Okay, once that's set up, we can go over here to the Gecko uh, SDK 4.0. Or rather, the bootloader app loader, and you should see a build icon up here. We can click that icon, uh, and it should take not too long to build. Okay, once that's done building, we can hit click the GNU ARM folder, and you can see all of these uh, binaries and similar that we can flash on a device. You want to select the hex one and you can click flash to device over here. Um, now I do already have things on my dev board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit erase. And once that's done, you can just click program and it's gonna do exactly what it needs to do. It's really smart and it'll put the bootloader where it needs to go. Um, once we're done with that, we can go over to the Blinky app uh, and we can do the same thing. We need to build this. Okay, now that we have finished building this, we can do the same thing. Hit GNU ARM, um, find the .hex file, right click and click flash device. All we have to do is click program. And now we should be done. Now, one thing to note is that for the Blinky, there's a GAT configuration file for the GAT database. And you can see here, there's this device information. If we click on this, you can see that currently, um, or let's, let's actually click on device name. Um, we can click on this and you can see that currently it's set to Blinky example, right? You can change this to whatever you like. Uh, if we go to the Blinky example, um, you can see there's this LED control attribute that'll let you write a zero um, or a one or you know something like that. Um, and this is what's going to allow us to right over to the uh, LED. And then we also have this report button that'll let us uh, get notifications for when the button is clicked. 
Okay, I'm currently on the Scilabs EFR Connect app. You can see here that we have a lot of demos and we have our Blinky demo over here. Um, if the device is appropriately named, meaning if it has some reference to the Bluetooth SOC Blinky and the firmware, uh, you should see a device pop up assuming Bluetooth is enabled on your phone. Um, this is available on iPhone and Android. Uh, you can click here, see the Blinky example, it'll connect. And if you look at, our, at your dev board, you can see that when you press the light bulb on your screen, the LED zero should turn on and off. And then if you click the button zero on the device, you should be able to get a notification, uh, which is parsed by our app and then displayed on your screen, right? Now you can also get a little bit more granular uh, with the Bluetooth devices. So here I can select our scanner and you'll see the Blinky example pops up and it shows the MAC address and that kind of thing. Um, once we connect to it, and once it's in a connected state, then we can see all of this information, including the Blinky example information that I showed you in our GAT database um, that was displayed by our Simplicity Studio software, right? So here we can do the same kind of thing where we can read and write for the LED control. So let's write on a one. We can click one, hit send, and you should notice that the LED is gonna turn on. We can write a zero and the LED will turn off. Uh, similarly, here we can read and we'll notify um, for the button. And then when I click the button, you can see it becoming a zero, a one, whenever I hit it, whenever the button is held down, it turns into a one and then a zero, so on and so forth. Um, so this hopefully will give you a good understanding of how to get started with a dev board, how to write software so that you can start hacking uh, and finding vulnerabilities.